Hi guys! This will be the first long form sewing tutorial for a pattern that I made, so bear with me if I seem a little bit nervous. The pattern that I cooked up for you guys is a four tiered like ruffled maxi skirt and I feel like this might be the item of the summer. I feel like they're generally in trend every summer, but this summer especially, I've just seen them everywhere. Like I swear every girly pop in the city of Boston has one. Myself included. This is one I got at Brandy Melville. And also the skirt that I kind of modeled the sewing pattern off of. So it has four tiers, an elastic waistband, and also, where is it? An optional liner on the inside if you happen to fall in love with a fabric that's a little bit sheer. So for my materials, I have my sewing pattern that I printed out, the fabric for the skirt, the fabric for the optional liner, elastic band for the waist, my sewing machine, and then just scissors and pins, very basic. The fabric that I picked out for the skirt is a beautiful, like red and pink gingham fabric. I don't know if it looks like classic red and white gingham, but it's not. The white squares are actually a, the same color as this liner that I picked out. I thought it was a beautiful, like more unique gingham color way. I don't know. I picked a super lightweight non-stretch fabric because I noticed that skirts of this type are generally made out of non-stretch. And I think the reason for that is that this fabric will hold the creases better when it gets ironed and therefore the ruffles will like look better and be more permanent. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, the first step is to tape the pattern pieces together following the pattern overview page, which is usually the second page of the PDF, I think. And it's definitely a huge rite of passage to tape copious amounts of hair into the pattern, at least in my personal experience. Then I'm cutting all of the individual pattern pieces out. And finally, I'm cutting the fabric according to the pattern pieces. Normally, I would trace a more complex pattern using a marker onto the fabric, but since it's just a couple of rectangles, I just went ahead and cut around the pattern pieces using scissors. So the reason why I haven't lined up all of my pattern pieces out on the fabric and then cut them is because one, I'm trying to conserve fabric, and two, all of these pattern pieces, if you follow the legend, I have to cut on the fold. So what that means is... God, am I not gonna have enough fabric? Just kidding. <laughs> We're good. I got like exactly enough, I think. Okay, the reason why I'm not lining all of my pieces up on the fabric before I cut it is because one, I'm trying to conserve fabric. And two, all of these pieces you have to cut on the fold. So if you look at the pattern, there's like a dotted line and that just means that you have to place the dotted edge along the fold of a fabric so that when you cut it out it's like twice as long if that makes sense so here I've just folded my fabric in half this is a folded edge right here and I'm just gonna place the pattern piece sorry Place the pattern piece with the dotted edge along with the dotted edge along the folded edge of the fabric, like so, and then start cutting. Okay, now that we're done cutting, it's time to start sewing. Hooray for that, because I have to say, cutting fabric is my least favorite part of the process. It's just so tedious and so boring. So the great news is that we got it over with. I'm just gonna follow my instructions that I include in the sewing pattern and try to explain visually and a little bit more in depth. The steps that I'm about to do are going to follow what is written. 
I'm starting by stacking the two pieces of the first tier. My fabric looks the same on both sides, but if yours does not, make sure you're stacking them with the right sides facing each other. Then pin or clip the two vertical edges. Since my fabric is gingham, I'm making an extra effort to try to line up the grid on the edges. And now I'm just sewing down both sides with an overlocking stitch. Okay, so now you should have this beautiful hemmed edge and you're just going to trim as close to the edge of the stitch as you can to create an overlocked seam. I took a short break to bring a shelf down from my fifth floor walk up for someone who bought it on Facebook Marketplace, which is why I'm so red in the face now and out of breath. Um, but we're just gonna rinse and repeat for the other three tiers. Okay, my back really hurts every time I sew something. I have my tiers now, all four of them. They're all sewn into loops like this and now it's time to add the ruffles as i mentioned before i try to keep my pieces in the same orientation as the sewing pattern just so i know which side is numbered which for this specific pattern it's not as important because it's literally just a rectangle and it's the same if you flip it so yeah, this is the top tier, which means it will have no ruffles. We're gonna take the second tier and we're gonna add a ruffle to the top hem. Something I really like about gingham fabric is that it has horizontal and horizontal, horizontal and vertical lines that really help you sew straight. At least for me, it really helps because sometimes it's hard. Um, that's going to be really helpful here because to add the ruffle, what we're going to do is add a basting stitch to the top of this tier. So I'm going to use one of these lines as my guidance to make sure that my ruffle is staying straight. So to do a basting stitch, I just set my machine to the longest stitch length possible and sewed along the edge. Then to add the ruffles, I took one of the threads and started shimmying the fabric down. I don't know why the video quality is so bad here, but hopefully it's relatively simple. And you'll know you've added enough ruffles when the ruffled edge is the same width as the tier above it. So here I'm just lining up the second tier with the bottom edge of the first tier to make sure that they're the same width. Now that we have all of our pieces all ruffled up, it's time to start attaching them to each other. The first step to doing that is to do the most tedious task in the world, which is ironing. With the iron, we're going to iron along the ruffles just to press them into place so they don't move around when you start sewing them. So now is the time to make sure that your ruffles are all spaced out the way that you want them to be and there are no bald spots. I'm just gonna give the liner fabric a quick iron while I have this baby out because this is super wrinkly. And I'm definitely going to be too lazy to take the iron out again later. Now to attach the tiers, start with the first tier right side out so the seam is on the inside. And the second tier inside out so the seam is on the outside. The next steps might be a bit complicated, but don't stress because we can do it. Take the first tier and sandwich it in between the two layers of the second tier. Then line the top edges up and pin them together. I started with first lining up the side seams and then worked my way to the middle.
Now using the same overlocking stitch as before, sew along this pinned edge to attach the two tiers together. I am using the basting stitch of the ruffle as a guideline for this overlocking stitch. And now the first two tiers should be beautifully attached to form the top half of the skirt. Don't fret, we're going to walk through this one more time. To attach the third tier, start with the third tier inside out and the second tier right side out. Sandwich the second tier in between the two layers of the third tier. Line up the edges and pin. And then sew it with an overlocking stitch and repeat this process again for the last tier. And we're done with the hardest part. Here I'm cleaning up the seams by once again trimming them as close to the edge of the overlocking stitch as possible. Please, please, please be careful. I started the trimming process sitting down and then it just got too intense so I had to stand up. I always wonder why my back hurts when I do sewing projects when I'm always hunched over like this. Most of the skirt is done and the ruffles are looking great. So the last few steps we need are to attach the elastic and the optional liner. To put together the liner, I'm sewing along both vertical edges with an overlocking stitch and trimming as we've done before. Then I'm quickly sewing the two ends of my elastic together into one loop. To finish up the skirt, flip the skirt inside out and fold the top edge down twice to create a tunnel for the elastic. I'm using an iron to press the folds to make it easier when I'm sewing it. If you are using the optional liner, with the liner right side out, put it around the skirt like you were dressing a child or a puppy or something. I don't know that's the best way I could figure out how to explain it. Tuck the elastic and the top edge of the liner into the folds on the top of the skirt and sew the edge of the fold with a straight stitch, but be careful not to sew over the elastic. Last but not least, I'm quickly hemming both the outside skirt and the liner. I just folded the bottom edge up twice and sewed it down with a straight stitch. And with that, the skirt is done and there is so much thread on my floor right now. I think she looks really good. Yeah, let's do a try on. Okay, and what do you think? I think it looks so cute. With the liner, it feels really like fluffy and airy. And I don't know, I think she's beautiful. There's definitely a lot of little threads that I need to nip and lint rolling to be done, but other than that, I think it's perfect. I love the pattern that I picked out. The red and pink is very like milk matey, if that makes sense. Or maybe that's like blue. I don't know. It's definitely giving some kind of farm girl. Last but not least, thank you for watching my first tutorial and I will see you next time. Don't forget, you can find my patterns on my website at patternsbycindy.com. Bye!